Well, I'm so glad you're at Radiant Church today. If I haven't had a chance to meet you, my name is Aaron Burke, and I'm the lead pastor here at Radiant Church. We are one church in multiple locations. We have a St. Petersburg location, Brandon, our Heights location, those online, and people here at South Tampa. And I'm so glad that you're with us today. Hey, I want to do something special for those who are joining us for the very first time. We're glad that you're with us today. Radiant Church, can we give it up for our guests that are with us for the very first time? It's a big deal. You're watching online. We're glad that you're with us. We're going to dive right into the message today. I've got a message that I believe you will never forget in our Happy Hour series. And this has been a series where we're just trying to help you get a little bit more joy during a season that is filled with a lot of craziness around us. And we designed this entire series just to be an infusion of joy. I don't know about you, I need a little bit more joy in my life right now. So we're looking at God's Word to find some truths to experience joy in a season that a lot of people don't have it. And we've been talking about a lot of different topics, but Today, I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Mark chapter 5. It goes Matthew, then Mark, then Luke. This is in the New Testament, Mark chapter 5. If you have uh, a Bible app, you can find it right on there. If you have our church app, you should be following along on the notes. You can do all your notes digitally right there online, and you can follow along. It's a longer passage than we would normally preach with. It's two stories brought into one, and I'm going to need you to engage for just a little bit, and then I'm going to break this thing down, and it's going to be a great day today. If you're a guest, we're glad that you're with us. Stay with us. I'm telling you, God's going to do something over the next few minutes that we're together. If you go, well, Aaron, I don't have notes. I don't have the app. How do I find this passage? There's a new website you can go to called google.com, google.com, and you can Google Mark chapter 5. Verse 21, let's start there. It says, when Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was still by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus, say Jairus. Jairus. He came and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and he pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. Now, parents, y'all know what he was going through. If you've ever had a child that's sick, it doesn't matter who's in your way, you're going to find the solution. You're going to do whatever it takes to make it, to get the resolve. This is what Jairus is going through. So look at verse 24, crucial verse. So Jesus went with him and a large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and she had spent all that she had instead of getting better She grew worse, and when she had heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd, and she touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I'm going to be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt her body, felt in her body that she was freed from the suffering. At once, Jesus realized that the power had gone out from him, and he turned around to the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowded around you, the disciples answered, and yet you asked, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. And the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at her feet and trembling in fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While he was still speaking, by the way, do y'all remember our guy Jairus? He's still there, like waiting, sitting around. Can you imagine the anxiety, the worry, the, okay, Jesus, let's hurt. Yeah, yeah, she's great, but come on, my daughter is still waiting. He's still waiting around, and look what happens. Some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, and says, your daughter is dead. It's gone from bad to worse. Let me put it in, in a contextual way for you guys. It's gone from March to April to July. All right, you, you got it. And it says it like this, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing this, Jesus told him, hey, don't be afraid, just believe. He tells him what he's about to do in this whole passage. He did not let anyone follow him except for Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When he came home to the synagogue leader, Jesus saw the commotion. The people were crying and wailing. Let me just say it this way. They did not have joy. So what happened? He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child's not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him and he put them all out. He took the child's father and mother and his disciples who were with him. And he went in there to where the child was. And he took her by the hand and said, Talitha Kom, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. 
Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. And at this, they were all completely astonished. They were completely astonished. Long passage of scripture, but let me break it down to you today in part five of our, of our happy hour series. And I'm calling this message, spoiler alert. You're taking notes, you can write it down. Spoiler alert. I don't know if you've ever had somebody completely ruin a movie for you, but this has happened many times. The last Avenger that came out, Avengers movie that came out, I'm not going to give it away, but someone walked up to me and told me who died at the end of the movie. They're no longer my friend. Unfriended on Facebook right there. Done. Done. Why? Because when you know the end, it really adjusts how you look at all the rest of it. For instance, I, was, uh, I will never forget watching the movie The Sixth Sense the very first time. How many people have seen the movie The Sixth Sense, okay? Sixth Sense, all right, came out in 1999. So don't pull this whole, like, I can't believe he gave away the end of the movie. You've had 21 years to watch this movie. I'm gonna tell you the end. All right, so the end of the movie is this. We were all blown away, we were shocked, because we watched the movie for two hours, and we had no clue what was about to happen. There's never been a bigger surprise that people of my generation went through than when we watched the end of The Sixth Sense in 1999. And if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm about to say. At the end of the movie, we find out that Bruce Willis was actually dead the entire time. All right, I should have said spoiler alert. I just gave it away right there, okay? He was dead the entire time. Now, this was the most unbelievable thing when we heard it. Like, it just didn't make sense. Now, now, you look back and you realize his wife didn't talk to him for like a year. Like in that whole movie, you're like, but it, that made more sense that they were having marriage problems for that long than him actually being dead the entire time. The movie just blew us away. Like it, it didn't make sense. So here's what happened after we watched The Sixth Sense. I know you did the same thing. So after we watched it, we did this. We rewatched the movie. And if you rewatch the movie, then you saw stuff in the movie that you made sense. Why? Because you knew it with the end in mind. Does this make sense today? You see, I want to help you today in a season of uncertainty where you think this is all crazy. What is going on? I'm going to help you understand that our God is a God of, that brings spoiler alerts to your situation because he helps you understand the end already from the beginning. And he wants to help you get through it. You see, our problem is this, is that we live life forward, but we understand life backward. So we always live life going, okay, we're, we're moving forward, but we understand it afterwards. So what if that could change? What if Jesus could step into the scene and could actually tell you what's going to happen before it actually happens? Wouldn't you deal with this pandemic a little bit differently? Wouldn't you deal with your struggle a little bit different? You see, when I know the end, it changes how I go through it. I wrote it down in my notes this way. It's in your notes. It is my confidence in the outcome that helps me experience joy in the uncertainty. So when there is a lack of, of joy, it's probably because I'm on the edge of my seat going, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's next. Doesn't that feel like our world right now? It reminds me, uh, so I, I kind of like scary movies. Not like scary, like spooky scary, but like suspenseful movies. Movies that kind of keep you on the edge of your seat. So my wife and I watched a movie. I don't endorse it, but I just, I watched this movie called The, the, the Quiet Place. So The Quiet Place, I don't know if you saw it, but basically I guess aliens invade the world and, and everybody dies if you make noise. So like my family would be the first dead for sure. <laughs> My kids would be, I mean, there's, there's no hope of survival. Those kids that survived in the movie, they were just stellar. And I just thought the entire time, my kids would be the first gone. So when you're sitting there watching the movie, you're on the edge of your seat because it's one of those movies that it's, the, the, whole, the whole movie's quiet. So then all of a sudden, something jumps out at you. And I try to like keep it all together, but I'm not like a really graceful movie watcher. I'm not like, ooh, that scared me. No, 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 like I'll sit there with my wife and it like jumps out and I'm like, ah! you know what I mean? Like it's all awkward and my wife just laughs at me. So I, I watched this movie with her and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so, like it freaked me out so many times. So then I got some of my friends together and I was like, hey, have y'all seen this movie? They're like, no, I haven't seen it. I was like, oh, me neither. Let's watch this. I heard it's pretty good. 
So we go to watch this movie together. So then I know the parts that are about to happen. I know what's about to happen in the movie. And so that, you know, it's all quiet and the thing jumps out at them and they all jump and they're just sitting me over there. I'm just sitting there all cool. Like that got you guys. <laughs> really? That's all it is. Like I'm, I'm tough. What was it? I looked at it different because I understood what was about to happen. Jesus does this all the time throughout the scriptures. James chapter one says it this way. All right. Consider it pure. What? Joy. That's what we're going for in this series, brothers and sisters. When you face trials of many kinds, let me just say this. You could write next to that trials of many kinds. The year 2020, amen? Like that is we are facing trials of many kinds. And here's why. Here's the spoiler alert God gives us right there. Because you know, no I don't, but he's telling us, you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. In other words, there's something on the other side of this and I'm gonna tell you what it is. So look what he tells us what it is. So let perseverance finish its work. In other words, don't give up on the process. Let it finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Did you see this spoiler alert right there? Like God should have warned you, hey, hey, you're going into this trial. Let me just tell you, it's going to be a real trial. But on the other side of that trial, you are going to be mature. You're going to be complete. You're not going to be lacking anything. I know it's tough, but you can have joy right now. Come on, give God better praise than that. Amen? It's a spoiler alert. He's telling us the end. And that is what he does with our guide, Jairus, who's dealing with the greatest battle of his life and yet when he presents it to Jesus, Jesus gives away the fact that, listen, this whole thing's going to be okay. I, I really believe God brought me into somebody's living room right now, somebody's car that's watching this to let you know, it's going to be okay. I know it's tough. I know, like, like, you might be freaking out. God is not freaking out about this season. Why? He already knows what's going to be the outcome of it. He sees what it's going to produce in you. And I want to show you some spoiler alerts from this story of how God really shows us what is going to happen when we are in the midst of trials. Let me show you in verse 23, it says it like this. He pleaded, talking about Jairus pleaded with, his, with Jesus. And he says, my daughter's dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she may be healed and live. And then if Bible says it this way, ready? If you underline your Bible, this would be a great place to underline. So Jesus went with him. Think about that. Out of all the things that Jesus had to do in his life, I mean, he could have preached a sermon, he could have multiplied food, he could have done so much, yet Jesus redirected his entire schedule to go with this guy Jairus because his daughter was sick. Can I present to you today, Jairus wasn't probably the only person there that had a sick daughter. Maybe he wasn't the only person there that had a sick yeah, an issue in his life. Maybe he wasn't the only person that needed to be healed, but he was the person that we saw that got the miracle. Why? Here's why. Write it down in your notes. Because your problem, here's a spoiler alert, your problem is Jesus' priority. Whenever you have an issue, as a follower of Jesus, your problem is Jesus' priority. Jesus adjusted his schedule when Jairus came up to him simply because Jairus did something that nobody else did. Guess what he did? He asked him. That's it. I wonder how many times you don't get a breakthrough because you want a breakthrough for something that you haven't asked the God of the breakthrough to bring a breakthrough in. So we're asking God, to, we're, we're sitting there going, why isn't God answering? And he's not answering because you're not calling. So what do we do? We have to go and present our request to him. That's what prayer is. Prayer is an invitation for God to step into your situation. You see, God is so powerful. And so amazing, but he's also a gentleman. I wrote it down this way. Jesus loves us so much that he is willing to deal with your issues. He is. He's dealing, willing to deal with your anxiety, with your concerns, with your financial troubles. Jesus is willing to do that. But here's what I wrote down. Ready? But Jesus respects our free will so much that he only goes where he's invited. And Jairus said, you know what? I don't care what else Jesus has on his agenda. This is the miracle that's going to happen today. 
And I wonder if there's some people that would get a little bit desperate with God and say, you know what, I'm not going to make this about some little, you know, good food, good meat, good God, let's eat prayer. I'm going to make my life about the fact that I'm going to bombard heaven and say, God, I know there's a lot of things I need, but I'm going to see this miracle in my life. I'm inviting Jesus into my situation. You see, when you invite him into your situation, you give him the ability to do what you are not capable of doing. You see, he's the God of the impossible, but it's not until you do the impractical and invite him in does he move in your situation. And this is the good news about God. He wants to step into it, but you got to invite him. That's why we are a pray first culture. We wear these little bands. You don't have one, you can get one in the lobby on the way out. We, we wear these bands all over. And it's not just so that we can identify each other, which we do. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Like you see each other in like the, you know, Circle K, you're like, oh, radiant, radiant, wow. We're a weird group. I get it, okay? It's, it's more than, it's a pray first band. It's a reminder to us that prayer is the power we need to see the miracles in our life. We can't do this. What God wants to do in your life is too big for you to do it alone. The miracle and the resurrection that needs to happen, the resurrection of that relationship, the resurrection of that purpose, that resurrection of your health is not possible on your own. But I promise you this, it's possible when you invite Jesus into it and he wants to step into your situation today. All right, so Jairus is ready. He, he's all, he's pumped. Jesus is going with him. And in the midst of them going towards his miracle, here's what pops up. I want you to see it visually. Ready? That. You see that? Now, you don't have to read it all because I know you're not going to. You're skimming it right now. You know what that is? That's an interruption. That is 10 verses that I read to you a few minutes ago in between Jairus presenting his need to God and God actually showing up and doing the miracle in his life. And in the midst of that is a season that we call waiting. Not only is he waiting, isn't this crazy? He's not only waiting for his 12-year-old daughter to get healed, but while he's waiting, a lady with an issue for 12 years steps under the scene. How many times has it happened in your life where the very thing you were praying for, somebody else got the miracle? Somebody else, you were praying for the job, and you believe in God. God, please deliver me from this dumb boss I have. I need another job. And then your friend calls you and goes, guess what? I got promoted. Why, God? Why? You're praying. You've been praying for year after year after year to have a child. I get it. We hear the stories all the time. And then your friend calls, oh my gosh, something's in the water. I'm pregnant with our fifth child. You're like, nothing's in my water. It's not working. I don't know what the problem is. You know, everybody's getting married. Everybody, marriage after marriage after marriage. And you're there and you're like, God, if I get one more bridesmaid dress, like, my closet is full. Like, I know, I know the pain. I was a single youth pastor for years. Let me tell you what that means. That means I have to go to every church event, most of them being uh, weddings, and I would sit there and everybody would walk up to the poor little youth pastor and put their hand around him and go, oh, Aaron, one day, your time is coming. Your time is coming, Aaron. And I would just sit there just like angry the whole time. I don't care what you do. Know, like get all mad. I found a really good line. Okay, if you're single, you're watching this. If you're always, if your time is coming, you're next. If they tell you this, here, here's the line I learned. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the message, but it's funny, okay? But what I learned to do is, is uh, if they told me that at the wedding, I would just wait for the next funeral. <sighs> so... During the funeral, I'd make it a point to find that person. And I'd walk over and put my arm around them and go, your time is coming. <laughs> Come on, that's funny. I don't care what you say right there. Here, here, here's what I've learned following God, okay? Because a lot of you guys are frustrated. You're not seeing the miracles that some other people are seeing in their life. Here's the spoiler alert, ready? Is that God's delay does not mean God's denial. 
There's a lot of people in here, you feel like it's been delayed, it's been delayed, it's been delayed. What we can learn from this story, the end of the story, the spoiler alert is this, is that just because it was delayed and it was interrupted does not mean it was denied from their life. And I've come to remind some people in here today, it's might, it might has taken longer for you than you wanted it to do. But I want you to know, God is working it together for the good. He will come through for you if he promised it, if he said it, it will happen in your life because that's what faith is by the way faith is not some rub the lamp and get whatever you want faith is not just trusting God faith is trusting God's timing and it's timing is not the same as your timing I want things now immediate and God doesn't do it that way and it bothers me at times and, and, and while I'm praying it sometimes other people are getting the miracle for it but that's where trust comes in. I'll never forget our church was only a few years old and we were praying so much for a, a South Tampa location. The facility we're in right now, our South Tampa um, location has been renovated. To, like we took over a lease of a large like movie theater, but before we rented from the movie theater. So we only had like a one small auditorium. It was gross, there was rats everywhere, it was green carpet. If you were there, you remember those days. So we were praying for a facility and there was like a couple around town that we were looking at. And I'll never forget a pastor who was a friend of mine. He called me and he's like, Aaron, I've just got to share the good news. And I'm like, what's the good news? He's like, Aaron, God gave us a shopping center, a plaza. We are going to be able to build this amazing church. And he's like, and I was like sitting there listening to him going, yay. <laughs> I'm so happy for you right now. Why, God? I didn't understand it, but when I can, listen, because we live life forward, we understand it backward. Now that I can get to this place and I look backwards, I say, oh, I see the hand of God throughout the whole thing. I see how God has direct, has divinely set it all up in our lives. We are praying in January and February, fasting, believing God that he's going to give us a new South Tampa facility because we continually outgrew that facility. And guess what? God didn't do it. And guess what? Thank God he didn't do it because March, April, May, June, that place would have been empty for months and months. God's timing is perfect. If he hasn't given it to you, it's either because you don't need it or you're not ready for it yet. Trust God's timing. Can I hear a good amen? Second Peter says it this way. This is a verse to hold on to right here. Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. Now, why would he start by saying, don't forget this one thing? Because we forget this one thing all the time. And here's what it is. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. So you know what this means. I've never understood it until now. God's really revealed some truth in this. Here's what it means to me. Is that there are some things with God that I feel like should take a day. And they feel like they've been taking a thousand years. Can we be honest? Like it should have taken a day. Like you get, you get pregnant, it's not happened. You should have found that spouse, hasn't happened. Should have landed that job. It takes, it only takes a day and it hasn't happened. And it feels like a thousand years. And in that season, I just want to encourage you, trust God. He's able to do it over the long span. Even if it didn't happen when you want to, it will happen in God's timing. But here's the other flip side of it. Like a thousand years is only a day with God. So there are certain things with God, that with life, that should take a thousand years. But with our God, guess what? It can happen in just a day. I've realized this in my life. There's some certain things that people have given up on and said, it would take a lifetime for that to be covered. Guess what? That's what our God specializes in. He can restore the relationship. He can bring healing in the body. He can bring freedom from the addiction. I don't know what you're going through. You go, it might take a thousand years. Not with my God. He can do it in a day. That's how good he is. Can, I, can you give him better praise than that? Amen? So Mark... Mark chapter 5, look what happens. The story goes from bad to worse. While he's still speaking, someone walks up and he goes, your daughter is dead. And what does Jesus say? What do they say? Don't even bother the teacher anymore. The crowd gets together. It's over. The situation is pointless. But look what happens. Jesus says it this way. Overhearing what they said, Jesus says, don't be afraid. What is he doing? He's giving them the spoiler right there. Don't be afraid. This is all going to be okay. But he did not let anyone follow him except for Peter, 
James, and John, the brother of James. So in other words, hey, we're going to go see this miracle. We're going to go see this thing happen. But I just want you to know, not, not everybody needs to come in this situation. Let me write it down. Rod should write it down this way. Spoiler alert. Ready? Number three. In dealing with our concerns, Jesus will usually address our community. So let me put it nicely. Ready? Not everybody needs to be close to your issue. Not everybody needs to. Not everybody needs to be speaking into that marriage. Some of you guys, that's your problem. Not, not everybody deserves your friendship. Not everybody deserves a follow online. Not everybody needs to be close to your life because you will be the product of those people you hang out with. So what do we do? We need to understand if we're ready for the miracle, understand God needs to put the certain people in your life to see that miracle happen. Which also means, hear me out, here's a spoiler alert, if God has removed some people in your life in the little, last little bit, take some excitement and joy in it because that meant God's removing some people that would have hindered the miracle that he wanted to do in your life. In other words, where he's taking you, they can't go with you. So don't weep about them being gone. Celebrate the fact that God weeded them out of your life so that you could go to the next level where God has you. Amen. I think the way too many people are sad, like, oh, God's cleared out the people in my life. No, he's getting you ready for a miracle because he realizes so many of those people are filled with doubt and negativity and cynicism. I don't think you can have a positive life surrounded by negative people. You got you to weed out some people in your life. And Jesus says, hey, we're going to go in and do this miracle. But hey, you, you and, and you, Thomas, and hey, you, Judas, and Matthew, hey, love you. Y'all just, y'all got to stay behind. I can't have your voice in this miracle right here. Be careful who you allow to be a voice in the midst of your issue that you're going through right now. That, that, by the way, is the reason we do radiant groups. That's why we need you to lead a group because we need you to get some people together that are people of faith. I don't need the negativity right now. We're in too difficult of a season and I need too great of a miracle for my life to be surrounded by people that are gonna keep me, that are gonna be weeping and wailing and mourning. No, this thing's not over. I'm not here to sit there and do a cry session with each other. I need a faith session with some people, some encouragement with some people to say, no, 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 you encourage me, I encourage you. We're going to get through this thing stronger than before. I wrote it down this way early in my notes. The cure for most of what you're going through is found in a change of your community. It's not even in your notes, but that's a good one-liner right there. Some of y'all just need to weed some people out of your life so God can do the miracle he wants to do. So he weeds out the room. And I, I, let me just say this. Not everybody needs to be in your room, but somebody, but Jesus does. Jesus needs to be close to whatever that issue is. Jesus gets close to that, that uh, girl as she's laying there on the table. And the story goes like this, verse 41. And he told her, and he took her by the hand, and he said, Talitha, come, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. And at this, they were completely astonished. Let me tell you who was not astonished. Jesus wasn't astonished. Jairus really shouldn't have been astonished. Jesus told him, hey, your daughter's not even dead. She's just sleeping. But the world around them was astonished. Can I give a prophetic word for somebody in here today? When you get on the other side of what you're going through, when people see the product and the maturity and the strength and the abundance in your life, here's what the world's going to do. They're going to be completely astonished of what God did in your life. I'm telling you, that is what is on the other side of this thing. They're going to be astonished. So here's the spoiler alert. Ready? Let's close it out with this. The spoiler alert is that the coming purpose is worth the current pain. I know it, it, it's not what you want to hear, but I want you to know it's the truth. I'm giving it to you, okay? Before you ever go through it, just so that you understand this, the coming purpose is worth the current pain. I've been following Jesus now for 20 years, two decades. And in two decades, I've realized that life is filled with unbelievable pain trials. I got expelled from high school. The pain was big, but I realized the purpose was bigger. I just, I just didn't know it at the time. I, I had to walk with my dad through massive addiction issues and thought he was dead multiple times. The pain was big, but the purpose on the other side was bigger. 
I've preached funerals within one year of two different people on two different sides of my family that had both committed suicide. The pain was big. But when I look back on it, I realize the purpose was so much bigger. If you'll just trust God, you'll realize the great pain you've gone through is to set up for great purpose that God wants to do through your life. Okay, seven years ago, Katie and I packed up our lives. We moved from Pensacola down here to Tampa. We didn't know anybody in the Tampa Bay area. We had a six-month-old baby. We had a place to stay. We were staying with family in Lakeland. It was the most painful, hard, difficult season of my life. And as I went through it, I did not understand. But as I've gone through it, I can look back and go, the pain was big, it was real. But the purpose on the other side was greater. I'm telling you, if you just won't quit, God will bring you through it today, church. He'll do it. That's why Paul says it this way. Therefore, we do not lose heart. I know some of you have. Don't lose heart today. Though outwardly we are wasted away, inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that outweighs them all. The pain is real. The purpose on the other side is greater than you can imagine. Let me close with one more verse, Romans 8, 28. For God causes what? Everything all things to work together for the good of those who love God. You go, well, it's overwhelming right now, Aaron. No, 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 even in your life. Because here's what we've done, okay? Last little visual and we're gonna close. Here's what we've done. We read a verse like that and we go, that's great, but, and we put this over our life. Do you remember these things? Do you remember these? From English class, let me tell you, it's called an asterisk. Here's what it means. It means some exceptions apply. So it's like I went, this is no lie, I went to a, I was driving down the street, I won't tell you where, and I was driving down the street and, and, and I saw a sign for this donut shop and on the side of the road it said 50% off. And I was like, that sounds awesome. Well, when I got closer, this was the sign that was right next to it, right next to the 50% off and it had this little sign right in the corner and then in small little letter, letters it says, Donuts are not included in this offer. You're a donut shop. What else is 50% off? But for some reason, the donuts were not included. Like your dollar coffee, you got 50% off of that. What I realized, it's, it's, just, it's crazy. It's this idea that we want to bait you in, but the reality is, is you don't get the benefit. Here's the truth about God. Because many of you guys have lived your life with this over your head for far too long. God can heal them. He can't do it for me. I'm the exception to the rule. God can restore that. He can't restore to me. God can give them a purpose. He can't give me a purpose. God can heal, uh, forgive their sin. He can't forgive my sin. I want you to know, Romans 8, 28, says it this way, for God, for God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. There is no sign over it. There's a period at the end of it being no, you, there is no exception. You are not an exception. God can do it in your life. He wants to do it in your life today. He's got a good result in mind. Come on, stay on your feet. Let's give it up for Jesus. Let's put our attention and our focus on a God who can bring everything and turn it around for the good of those who love us. Come on, let's sing it out. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won, I am. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated. for two groups of people that are both represented here today with every eye closed first group of people that are here today and it's people that you're on the first side of the miracle you're 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 on this place and you're you're like Jairus 
you've got a major need in your life and you don't know what the solution is, here's my challenge for you. Give it to Jesus today. Invite him into your life. Trust his timing. Trust the process. Hold on to the promises of his word and believe that the current pain is so big, but the current, the future purpose is gonna be so much greater. Lord, I pray for people right now who are in need of a miracle. You know who you are, just submit it to the Lord. Lord, I pray that you would give them the strength. Lord, even as Paul says, Lord, that they would have their, their strength renewed day by day. Let it be renewed today. As they're experiencing your presence here at Radiant Church. They're renewed to keep fighting, keep believing, keep trusting. Keep putting their faith in you, God. You will bring the miracle, even if it's been delayed, it's not been denied. We trust that in Jesus' name. Second group that's here today is people who don't have a relationship with Jesus. I want you to know, God loves you. He has a purpose for your life. He didn't bring you this far to fill you. He brought you right here. Tune in into this message, because he has a plan for you. But here's the problem. Our sin disconnects us from God. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So you don't have to pay for the sacrifice of your sin. Jesus did that on the cross for you and me. So what's our part? Our part is to put our faith in Him. To respond to Him and say, yeah, I'm going to accept your forgiveness. I'm going to give you my life, and I'm going to follow you. And I promise you, that simple yet significant decision will change everything. If that's you today, and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, but you want one, Today's your day. On the count of three, right here in South Tampa, those that are joining us online, I want you to throw that hand up. Let us know who you are, and you put it right back down. I just want to pray for you. With every eye closed, every head bowed, that's you. One, two, three. Throw those hands up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, so many people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Those online, thank you so much. You put your hand right back down. Why don't we all pray this prayer? How about we all pray it out loud at every location? Let's pray it together. Say, Dear Jesus. Come on, say it loud. Say, Dear Jesus. Today, I give you my life, my past, my present, and my future. Forgive my sins. Today, I want a fresh start. And I make a decision to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, can we celebrate those that just made the best decision of their life? It's awesome.